Hello, hello! Perfidious Speed here, back to watch this entire dump of a colony fall apart at the seams in Haven Colony. I have no idea what's going on, but I feel a little bit like an attractive, highly talented, greatly educated young woman who, despite her gifts, is still stuck making 72 cents on the dollar. We've kind of hit a glass ceiling here in Avon Colony. Uh, I, I think that's what's going on. Uh, we got some plague spores coming in at us, too. You want to fire again, plasma turret? Thank you. Plague spores taken care of, but where our water is low, but I can't pump any more water, even though the fact that I have, like, pumps working desperately, our water situation just won't seem to fix itself. Same thing we've got going out here with, like, air quality. Keep saying air quality is dangerously low out here. I have like three air filters out here working their asses off and I can't get I've got here you know what here put all of these on all of these on fill I want these working at maximum efficiency I've got three filters out here working at maximum efficiency and I can't get I can't get the air quality to go up it just stays at the same shit level It's at 61 like we can't get air quality to go up out here I don't know what the deal is. I think maybe it's because we're so far away from these things, but it really feels like maybe we've hit a bug. And I'm beginning to wonder if maybe the water situation isn't a similar issue. It's because of its location. But on the plus side, wow, that roaring thing is real irritating. We do possibly have an out here. I think what we're going to do is just ignore everything and try and bum rush our way out here to the objective. So all we have to really do is build a couple drone manufacturer centers, get out here and get this, and I think we might be able to win before everybody dies. So what we need is just some drone management structures. We'll put you here. And then once that's completed, we're just going to expand out there. I'm hopeful we don't... We're going to have to build at least one more drone structure. Problem is we're going to have a difficult time getting people to come out here to work. Uh, to help with the colony situation here with the water... One thing I did do, I put uh, all of our colony storage stuff on, like, lowest priority. You know what? Is there any place we could put, like, some water in here? What is this? That is a water pump. You know what? Why are you not a pump? Water pumps are all fill jobs now. Like, everybody needs to be pumping as much water as they possibly can. I'm tired of looking at the low... Okay, it's, it's actually going up, I think, maybe a little bit. Maybe some of the steps we have taken have helped. I'm not really sure. Our air quality, though, just seems unfixable. Like, it, 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 out here, we just can't get the air quality to go up at all. 58, 59. The air quality out here is actually higher. Why? 60, well, no, wait, maybe it is rallying up a little bit. No, it's still 59 out here. I don't I don't know what's going on. It, it, it's just like we can't get it to go up. I'll you a reward if you earn a few more. I don't want any more fucking commendations, Jack Torn. You know what I want? I want to come out here and get this damn artifact, and then I want this mission to be over. It's not only the only thing I want, it's the only thing I've really ever wanted, Jack, is just to have you banished from my sight. Just go away. Get, get beyond my presence. That's really all I want. It would be lovely if this drone structure was going to be close enough, but it's not going to be. We're going to build an outpost right here just so we can get some people to work in this facility. Because otherwise nobody's going to, and we won't be able to go forth and build our next drone facility. Alright, so the water scenario seems to have rallied a bit. We're coming up to 1.2. We're up to 8 per colonist, which is still dangerously low. Oh, good, we have creep spores as well. Uh, looks like they're going to drift into our guns and probably get killed. We have scrubber drones, I think, so worst case scenario, the scrubber drones will have to go scrub that. I just, all I want to do is get out here and get this it's over with. I just want to end this mission, Jack. Okay, we have plasma turrets, like, in this general vicinity. We have one right there on point defense. There is a pair. We may not be able to get both of these, actually, because I think you're... And eh, we may not be able to get all the creep spores. Insufficient housing, 350 of 350 use. What are you talking about insufficient housing? I'm building an outpost right here. People can move out here to the boonies. What about this? They're actually max inhabited. All right, we'll upgrade. Problem solved. Did we get the creep spores? We must have. Recovering the object is now our only objective. So what's the range on this? Like we can't, I mean, we could probably pick that up. Can we just recover this? Cannot reach. Delightful. Well, let's slap down some more tubes then. 
And one more drone structure is all... Th this should be all we need. Like, one more construction drone hub and we're done. Also, I can't help but notice that construction drone is not picking up the cargo pod like I told it to. Pretty sure I said, hey, go pick up the cargo pod and what is it doing? You know what? In fact, I'm just going to upgrade this shit. Build this faster. I just... I, please, I want it to be done. It's nice to see the other little drone is coming over here to do the upgrade while this drone does the work out on the end. That's just good thinking. That's solid logistics. Drone hub construction worker, guys. That's that's good thing. And be like, no, you know, my drone has the range to reach this one. I'll handle the upgrade, Jim. You go out there and work on the unfinished construction. Let's make this a real team effort. Jim and Rick, those guys, they just get along really well. I feel like they're they're really starting to gel as a team. They work well together. You know, Jim's got some weaknesses, but where he has weaknesses, Rick comes in and compliments him. Jim's weaknesses are Rick's strengths and vice versa, and together they're an unstoppable duo of drone construction. Like Rick doesn't really have the metallurgy background he needs, but Jim has a postdoctorate in uh, material sciences. It's uh, pretty good. Rick's, uh, you know, manual dexterity and physical abilities when it comes to the actual drone control drivers is not so great. But that's okay, because, you know, Jim's got that shit on farm. Yeah, he plays a lot of, uh, a lot of Twitch video games. He's one of the colony's best CSGO players. Plays competitively. He's really good. Drone has been summoned here. Yeah, you know what? Cannot reach! Thank you for finishing this before you go pick up this pointless. I mean, this is going to be entirely pointless. We summon a drone. One of these guys is going to go over there and summon it. As soon as this is complete, I'm coming out here clicking on this to recover it. And then we're getting the hell out of this mission. That's it. We're done. I'm tired of this place. Uh, at least... It, okay, you know what? We got to give credit where credit is due. There is one nice thing we can say about this uh, little endeavor that we've embarked upon. One nice thing. Only one, but one nice thing. At least they didn't put us in the middle of a burning desert or some other miserable hellhole. Like, this place is actually habitable, though. And there we go. He's going to pick that up. This thing's going to recover this artifact. We're going to take it back to the artifact containment facility. Jack Torrin's going to talk to us. And thank fucking God we're out of the mission. Done, Chancellor. The colony appears to be self-sufficient, and you've recovered the artifact. Yeah, you know, except for the horrific air quality problem, which is seemingly unfixable. Dad, are you online? I'm on. Okay, what's the status of your research? Have you discovered anything more about our mysterious cube? The only uh, thing Jack's discovered is what the inside well, of his own uh, asshole looks like. You were telling us that the alien race received some sort of warning about an impending extinction-level event. Have you figured out the nature of this event? Yeah. Apparently, they received radio signals from another extraterrestrial species telling them that a nearby star was about to go supernova. So they all got blasted with gamma radiation and just uh, completely destroyed? Ouch. Well, I guess that explains why they're not here anymore. Yep, they're all dead. Baked to the planet. Yeah, total bright side. You know, unless uh, some other stellar okay, remnant in the area decides like to explode again. The stellar history logs. See if you can find any evidence of historical supernovas within seven parsecs of Avon Prime. I'll do a search, but it may not be in here. The supernova records we brought from Earth are spotty at best and aren't accurate in more than a half a million years back. Yeah, boy, fucking humanity was really slacking 500,000 years ago with regard to cataloging supernova. You know, back in proto-civilization before they had discovered fucking farming and shit. So all the other intelligent life in the universe would have something to remember them by. But here's the catch. It had to be limited to 88,000 words. Okay, that's weird. Why? Why only 88,000 words? It doesn't say. But it sounds like the aliens were just as confused about that as we are. 88,000 words is only like one novel. The 21st century. And a short novel at that. Wow. So they basically told them they were all going to die, and they had to fit their last words into a paperback novel. Fuck me, I'm getting riff back from the narrators of Avon Colony here. Then what do you even do at that point? What a situation. What do I do? I hire Neil Gaiman to write it. That's what I do. You have a terminal disease and six months to live. And all that anyone will ever be able to know or remember about you will be what you write in a notebook. They can pretty much just write fuck you 44,000 times. Wow. 
I imagine Wait, were you talking about the insanity of writing fuck you 44,000 times? I'm pretty sure it'd be relatively cathartic. It's totally irrelevant. And how do you even pick what to write? I told you, you fuck you 44,000 times. On the 88,000 words that are going to represent everything they've lived for as a species. You don't even tell them. You just keep them in ignorance and in the dark and you write fuck you 44,000 times so that the universe knows you were really pissed off about being wiped out by a supernova. Because you don't care about the history of your species at all. All that you care about is the extinction event finally happened and you were one of the unlucky bastards unlucky enough to actually be alive when it occurred. And you're really filled with rage about it. So you know what? You make sure that your last effort as a species is one giant middle finger to the rest of the universe. These 44,000 or these 88,000 words are going to be the only thing anybody ever remembers about you. And you're going to be like, well, start writing. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. And just there you go. Until you reach 44,000, keep counting. That's what I would do. Am I the best example of what humanity has to offer? No, like I said, if I had to legitimately do that, I think I'd just have Neil Gaiman come up with something. But uh, in in a pinch, or you know, if I was tapped to write it, I'm, I'm sticking with the fuck you plan. It's simple, and in, it, in its simplicity, it feels kind of elegant. Because mostly you're just angry about being wiped out. I think that expresses your rage quite nicely. It's going to be difficult for anybody reading that to actually decipher what that means because, you know, it could be like saying that and the species that finds it is some kind of like asexual amoeba-like entity that reproduces by budding or something. And I'll be like, I have no idea what this is supposed to mean, but uh, it seems like they're really, really wanted to communicate As this recall, one very simple point. Guarantees your citizens the right to vote on their you know what? They're welcome to vote me out of office because I'm fucking out of here, lady. I'm done. See ya. Take a look at our score. We had 359 colonists. I think that's our greatest colony yet. We could continue on to Tanari Glacier, but you know what? I'm not gonna, and there's a reason why. As of the day I'm recording this, it's a while until War of the Chosen comes out, but I have a pretty big backlog of Avon Colony, and I believe, if my count is correct, the day that this video goes live is actually also the day that War of the Chosen comes out. So for you lucky viewers, there won't be any more Avon Colony, because you know what, War of the Chosen? Yeah, I'm going to be playing that. Avon Colony's a good game. I like it. It's a nice little city builder. Is it XCOM? No, no, it's really not. It's really not XCOM at all. Not at all. It's a good game. It's not XCOM too good. We're going to be going back to my one first and truest YouTube love, XCOM. Just when I thought I was out, she pulled me back in. By, you know, simply going with the fact that I don't have to fucking play Long War anymore, which I think is a genuinely terrible mod. But War of the Chosen, I don't know anything about it because I've been... As, the only thing I know about it is the day that it releases. Because the day they announced it, I read the press release, saw the release date, and then immediately set about firewalling myself from the rest of the internet so that I could avoid War of the Chosen spoilers. Like, I unfollowed XCOM on Twitter... Uh, I, I muted a bunch of channels in my Discord. I haven't been to the XCOM subreddit in like three months. None of that stuff. All the things I normally do to sort of keep a pace with what's going on in XCOM, deliberately all brick-walled myself, Cask of Amontillado style, away from it so that I could have a completely unblemished experience going into War of the Chosen for the first time. And I'm really looking forward to it. I love doing the blind playthroughs too. I really feel like they add a, a lot of entertainment value because, you know, watching me screw up is sort of comedically enjoyable. And that should be your episode possibly the same day this video goes up, depending on how the timing works. If I can get one recorded, uh, edited, and uploaded all in one day, I will try and get day one coverage. I mean, it's not like I got an advanced playthrough copy or anybody. I'm not, you know, important enough to do that. But day one content's not out of the question. If it didn't happen, though, worst case scenario, there'll be an episode up tomorrow at the usual time. So we'll be back for War of the Chosen. What's my overall verdict on Avon Colony? Good little city builder. Good little colony game. It's fun. It's you know, basically like a planet base with a campaign and a little bit more. It's got a little bit more dynamic stuff going on in the background. There's a little more interaction between buildings. It's like a subtly more nuanced version of planet base, a game I also actually really quite like. If you've enjoyed this series of Avid Colony, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Support really does mean a lot. Wouldn't say that we probably won't see some more Avon Colony. It seems like maybe we'll be streaming it. I would like to finish the campaign. I've actually been enjoying it, barring this most recent mission where they wouldn't tell me what the hell I was supposed to do. But other than that, I've really been enjoying Avon Colony. So, you know, we'll probably see some stream footage of that at some point. But that's it for this episode. Thanks very much for watching. And if you want to see some XCOM action, you might consider subscribing because new episodes of that are back every single day. Right now, though, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.